Today we're going to discuss different methods of paying crypto miners from pools. So firstly we need to understand how mining pools work for all crypto miners. It works on a shares basis. Many miners will see in their mining software they have a shares counter which counts how many shares you've mined on a certain network. As you can see here it shows how many shares we have mined and the other two numbers are the stale or invalid shares. So if you have these then you might be having problems with the pool or the miner. Anyway, when we are mining, your payout is determined on a shares basis. These shares numbers are submitted to the pool from the mining software and then they give you a payout based on the shares number. However, there are many different ways to calculate this payout based on shares and that's what we're going to be comparing today. So the four main methods for shares payouts are PPS, FPPS, PPLNS and PPS+. When looking on mining pool stats, we can see that pools choose to use these four methods for payouts for mining. We can see here a PPS pool, then we have an FPPS pool, then we have PPLNS and then PPS plus. So pools choose different ways of paying out in shares. Now let's get into each four of these methods and compare them to each other. Let's first start off with PPS, which stands for pay per share. PPS offers an instant flat payout for each share that is solved. Under this payment method, a miner gets a standard payout rate for each share completed. Each share is worth a certain amount of mineable cryptocurrency. After deducting the mining pool fees, the miners are given a fixed income every day. Therefore, under PPS model, the returns are relatively stable. This model becomes lucrative during a bearish run of a particular coin. So these shares are paid out at an expected value that won't necessarily correspond to how many blocks the pool finds. So it's basically a set rate that the pool will say that they'll pay out for each share instead of saying based on luck of how many blocks the pool actually finds. Next we have PPLNS, which stands for pay per last N shares. In this case, profits will be allocated based on the number of shares miners contribute to a block. This kind of allocation method is closely related to mining blocks on the network. If the mining pool excavates multiple blocks in a day, the miners will have a high profit. If the mining pool is not able to mine a block during the whole day, the miner's profit during the whole day is zero. Notably, in the short term, the PPLNS model is highly correlated with pool's luck. If the luck factor of a particular mining pool decreases in the short term, the miner's income will also decrease accordingly. This also works in the opposite direction as mining pools can be very lucky in the short term. However, in the long term, the luck factor tends to average out to the mean and PPLNS is normally used by bigger pools as they would have better luck on the network and therefore miners would receive more income. So each share that you submit will be a percentage of a block that is currently being mined on that pool. Next we have FPPS, which stands for full pay per share. This type of payout, both the block reward and the mining service charge are settled according to theoretical profit. And they calculate a standard transaction fee within a certain and distribute it to miners according to their hash power contributions on the pool. It increases the miners' earnings by sharing some of the transaction fees. With PPS and FPPS payment methods, you will get paid no matter if the pool finds a block or not. This is the most significant advantage over PPLNS. The risk and reward are higher with PPLNS plan. Most of Bitcoin's hash rate runs on FPPS because a lot of miners want a steady payout and there is only 900 Bitcoin blocks produced per day. So it'd be hard to predict which pools are gonna find these blocks and therefore miners just want a guaranteed payout for the shares that they submit. Lastly, we have PPS Plus, which is pay per share plus. PPS Plus is a blend of both PPS and PPLNS. The block reward is settled according to the PPS model and the mining service charge or transaction fee is settled according to PPLNS mode. That is to say, in this mode, the miner can additionally obtain the income of part of the transaction fee based on the PPLNS payment method. This was a major drawback in the PPS model. So personally, I don't think PPS plus works very well for GPU miners, as the hash rate tends to be spread out enough where you can just use PPLNS pools, which would give a better payout. So those are the four main payout methods. However, there are some niche ones such as PROP, which stands for proportional, which meaning if you submit 50% of the shares to a block, then you'll get 50% of the reward from the block. Kind of like how PPLNS works, but a lot more simplified. Then we have other variations like PPLNT and DPPS, as we can see here. However, overall, I would say that for ASIC miners, like ones on Bitcoin or Dogecoin, I would try go for a pool that has FPPS 
as its stable rewards will not rely on the pool luck. Just because ASIC mining is so competitive in terms of machine power, then the FPPS model, you don't have to rely on the luck. However, when it comes to GPU mining, I would stick to PPLNS, just because it allows for basically solo mining without having a large amount of hash rate. You get paid exactly what you mine, and it does rely on a little bit of pool luck, but over time, this will average out to the mean, and you'll be paid for what you actually mine. Now, if you have any questions regarding the pool payout methods, then leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more content like this.